Alrighty, good evening everybody. Today we're going to do our first online notes and it's on unit conversions and the metric system. So just a little background about what the metric system is and why we need it. Um, the metric system was a way that we found as in the scientific community of standardizing measurements around the world so that um, we all know what one meter means. So instead of, you know, for us in distance we use the um, like the periwinkle and England uses the schnorfel bork, we all <laughs> use the same standard way of doing this. And so we standardized it and in 1960 the International Committee on Weights and Measures adopted a modern system of measurements known as the System of International Units or the SI units. And these are the ones that we're supposed to use around the world. They're um, standard or universal. The scientific community has backed the SI system and all measurements taken in science are measured using SI units. Now the only difference for the US is that we actually tend to still use the metric system when we describe things. Um, for example, in cars we measure stuff in miles per hour instead of kilometers per hour, which the SI unit would be kilometers. So it's just kind of something different. It's called the English system, but the Americans are actually the only ones who still use it. So. Just kind of keep that in mind, but here in the science classroom with chemistry, we're only ever going to use the SI unit. So all forms of measurement have base units, or kind of the um, what is used at the at the beginning. So for mass, it's the only one that is different, and it's called the kilogram. For time, it's seconds. For volume, it's liters. For distance, it's meters. And for temperature, we use Kelvin, or more commonly. Celsius. Now many measurements in science are much smaller or larger than the base unit and they require a prefix to be attached to that base unit so that we can describe them. So kilogram is actually, it's the base unit but it does have a prefix attached to it so it's kind of the one thing that is different about um, mass versus liters and meters. So kind of keep that in mind. So let's look at the metric system and prefixes and what we need. So we're going to have this number line here, and right here is our base unit, so the second, the meter, the liter. And if we need to get bigger than that, one step bigger is deca, then hecto, then kilo, and mega. Now kilo and mega are the only ones that I really want you to concern yourself with. And so a kilo is a thousand times bigger than a base unit and mega is a million times bigger. If we go on the other side, we go smaller. There's deci, centi, milli, micro, nano, and pico. So centi is a hundred times smaller, milli is a thousand times smaller, micro is a million times smaller, nano is a billion, and pico is a trillion times smaller. Now the only ones that you need to know on the big side is kilo and mega, and on the little side is centi, milli, micro, nano, and pico. So deci, deca, and hecto are just kind of there so that you know that they're in between, but we don't need to concern ourselves with them. Note that all prefixes here are in comparison to the base unit. For example, there are a thousand milligrams in one gram, because milligrams are smaller than grams, so there should be more of them. So this 10 to the 3 here means that there is a thousand milligrams in one gram, and here there are 10 to the negative 3, so it's one, th one gram is one thousandth of a kilogram, or one thousandth of a kilogram is equal to one gram. Um, so it's it's, kilo is larger, so it's got a negative sign here. Now, you can write it the other way. It just kind of depends on how you want to remember if it needs to be negative or positive. But the 3, the 6, the 2, the 3, the 6, and the 9, and the 12, those all stay the same. It just kind of depends on which one you're describing as 1 as to whether it's positive or negative. And you can write it either way. So let's look at using this, converting between metric units. Oftentimes you're going to encounter situations where different prefixes are used in the same problem. 
you can convert from a base unit to a prefixed unit or vice versa. So for example, if I need to describe 56.91 grams in terms of milligrams, I can do that. And the way that we're gonna do this is through a method called unit conversions or dimensional analysis or the factor label method or the train track method or whatever you wanna call it. So if we think about back to our number line, I know that um, milligrams are smaller, so one milligram is one thousandth of a gram, or one gram is equal to one times 10 to the three milligrams, or one gram is equal to a thousand milligrams. Okay, so we think about those conversion, these are called conversion factors, and we can plug this into kind of an equation. So if we start with 56.91 grams, and I know that I need to get to milligrams, I know that for every one gram, I have a thousand milligrams. Now these are all the same conversion factors, just written in a couple different ways. And so whichever way you're comfortable with, that's fine with me. The key thing here is that grams are on top because that's what we start with. So grams need to be on bottom here because we want them to cancel out. We want this gram to cancel out with that gram. That is the key, is that the thing that we want to cancel out has to go on bottom, leaving us with the thing that we want, milligrams. And so if I take 56.91 grams and I multiply it by 1,000, in this factor label method, anything on top gets multiplied, anything on bottom gets divided. So 56.91 times 1,000 divided by 1 is... 56,910 milligrams, or 5.691 times 10 to the fourth milligrams. And so that's our answer. Now I could have done this just as easily by putting one milligram on top and one times 10 to the negative three grams on bottom. So I'm just using a, the same conversion factor but in a different format. Grams still cancel out, leaving me with milligrams, and the answer by taking 56.91 and dividing it by one times 10 to the negative three, I get the same answer. So either way, you're getting the same answer. It's just kind of up to what you prefer. Do you prefer to have, uh, which uh, conversion factor do you prefer to use? And we're gonna have lots of practice with this, so don't worry too much. So, sorry, that's called a conversion factor. All right, so let's try another one. Let's go from 19.6, for milli, uh, meters to nanometers. Now, if we think back to our number line, this is our conversion factor. There's one times 10 to the negative nine meters is equal to one nanometer, or one meter is equal to a billion nanometers, or one meter is equal to one times 10 to the nine nanometers. So we start with 16.34 meters. What do you think is gonna go on bottom? Should it be meters or nanometers? And I hope that you answered meters, because meters was on top, so we need to cancel it out, so it needs to go on bottom. So I can say one meter and one times 10 to the nine nanometers. My meters are gonna cancel out, leaving me with nanometers, giving me an answer of 1.634 times 10 to the 11th nanometers. I just multiplied 16.34 by 1.1 times 10 to the ninth. Now if I was to convert, so this was going from um, bigger to smaller, this is also going from bigger to smaller, but from a prefixed bigger unit to a base unit. So 123 kilometers, how many meters is that? Kilometers is one thousandth of a kilometer is equal to one meter, or one kilometer is equal to a thousand meters, or one kilometer is equal to one times 10 to the three meters, same thing. Kilometers this time is gonna go on top because that's what we start with. So kilometers needs to go on bottom because that's what we're trying to cancel out. And this time meters is going to go on top because it's what we're looking for. So kilometers cancel out. 123 times 1,000 meters is equal to 123,000 meters. So that's our answer. So this is not anything too major. So. We can do larger conversions between metric units. We can go from small prefixes to large prefixes. This is kind of going through the base unit. So let's practice that. So if I start out with 879 nanograms and I need to get two kilograms, I personally don't know off the top of my head what the number line value from going to nanograms to kilograms is. So what I always do is convert back to the base unit before trying to get to another 
prefixed unit. Sorry guys, I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> okay, sorry about that. Um, so 879 nanograms. So I'm gonna need to get from nanograms to grams before I can go from grams to kilograms. So nanograms to grams, nano is one times 10 to the ninth nanograms per one gram. So I have one times 10 to the ninth nanograms per one gram. Now I've canceled out my nanograms, I'm left with grams, but that's not as far as I need to go. I need to go all the way to kilograms. So I know that there are a thousand grams in one kilogram. So a thousand grams goes on bottom because it needs to be canceled out, leaving me with kilograms on top, which is where I want it to go. So I'm going to be taking 879, dividing it by one times 10 to the ninth, and then dividing it by a thousand. My answer is 8.79 times 10 to the negative 12 kilograms. And it's negative 12 because it's very, very small, because we're going from very small to very large. So we should have a, a large negative number in our exponent there. So always, when you're doing unit conversions, you should always try and look at your scientific notation, see if it makes sense. All right, now let's start out with 1.58 times 10 to the negative 8 kilometers going to centimeters. So we're going from really big to really small. So. Am I going to go straight from kilometers to centimeters? No, I don't know that conversion in my head, so I'm going to go to meters first. I know that for every one kilometer, I have a thousand meters. So my kilometers goes on bottom because that's going to cancel out, leaving me with meters, but I'm not done yet. I know that for every one meter, I have a hundred centimeters. So my meters now cancel out, leaving me with centimeters, which is what I wanted. I'm going to take 1.58 times 10 to the negative 8, multiply it by a thousand, multiply it by a hundred. Now I'm going to get 1.58 times 10 to the negative 3. Now this is still a very small number, but it is much smaller than the number that I started out with because I'm using a smaller unit to describe it, so that makes sense. So with unit conversions, keeping track is the hard part. And so you can kind of do it however you want. Uh, keeping track of the exponent is the hard part. If I want to convert from kilometers to um, I can't remember what I'm converting to here, from kilometers to centimeters. So if you look at that last problem. Now, I can keep kilometers on bottom because it has to be on bottom. And I can keep, there's a couple different ways of keeping track of what it, whether your exponent should be positive or negative. And that's by the first method, keeping a one in the denominator the whole time, okay? This method keeps the denominator as one. So some people like that because that means that they never have to divide, that all they have to do is multiply in unit conversions. But sometimes that can be tricky because sometimes you have positive exponents up here and sometimes you have negative. So it's kind of up to you what you prefer. But this is one method, is to always keep the denominator one. Now, you don't always have to do that. Sometimes people prefer to keep the base unit as one. This method keeps the base unit as one. So I'm still starting with the same number, still ending up with the same value. But here, I kept my base unit as one. So I had one times 10 to the negative three kilometers and 100 centimeters. So it was a flip. Instead of keeping my, my denominator one, I kept my base unit one. And so if you're more comfortable with memorizing the number line than trying to remember, okay, is kilo bigger or smaller than what I'm describing, so it should be positive or negative. This is one way to do it. It's just kind of up to you. The denominator as one is kind of a harder one because you really have to keep track of what's going on. It's easier to just keep the base unit at one. Um, but it's up to you. And we're gonna go through this and practice this a lot in class, so don't, don't fret too much. Now, you can also use unit conversions to other aspects of life and science, even using non-metric units. For example, I can convert from feet to centimeters. I just need a specific conversion factor. So if I know that there are 15.8 feet and I want to figure out how many centimeters that is, I start with feet. From here, I can go from feet to inches. I know that for every one foot, there are 12 inches. And then I can have a, my feet cancel out and I'm left with inches. And I know that there's a very specific conversion factor from inches to centimeters. And I know that for every one inch, I have 2.54 centimeters. So my inches cancel out, leaving me with centimeters, which is what I wanted. And so there are 482 centimeters in 
one and 15.8 feet. And note here that um, this 12 inches is considered to be a um, infinite number of sig, sig figs. So it's one of those situations where if the idea of counting or units or anything like that, it's one of those places where sig figs, it's considered to have an infinite number. So my answer doesn't have to have two sig figs because there are 12 inches. My, my sig figs on my answer comes from my original question. This is considered to have an infinite number of sig figs. So we can go from feet to centimeters. We can also go from seconds to weeks. I know that I have 29 seconds to start with. And so I know that for every, to go from seconds to weeks, I'm probably gonna wanna take a couple different uh, jumps because I don't know very specific ones. I know though that there are 60 seconds in one minute. And I know that there are 60 minutes in one hour. So my minutes cancel out. I know that there are 24 hours in a day so my hours cancel out, leaving me with days, and I know that there are seven days in one week. So my days cancel out, leaving me with weeks. So I've gone from seconds to weeks in one, two, three, four jumps. And so when I do the math, I take 29, divide by 60, divide by 60, divide by 24, divide by seven, and I get 4.8 times 10 to the negative five weeks, a very small number, which makes sense because 29 seconds is not very long. So we're gonna practice this a lot in class tomorrow and uh, Friday as well. So that was just a kind of an introduction to unit conversions to get you guys thinking about it and looking at it. Start thinking of questions that you might have for me about how we're gonna do this and we can talk about them in class tomorrow. See you tomorrow.